so in this question now uh, we're given a cubic function right um f of x which is equal to x cube plus bx squared plus cx plus d and the first question 10.1 is saying let's write down the value of d uh, before we even look at our sketch uh, let's look at our equation and see what d means right uh, so here's d here i just circled it in red i want you to realize something here that if you say f of zero right uh, you're going to get zero cube plus b of zero squared plus c uh, multiplied by zero plus d so f of zero is going to be zero cube that's zero plus b multiplied by zero squared that is zero plus c multiplied by zero that is zero right plus d so f of zero is basically equals to d and we know fully well that if we see x of zero we're looking for the y intercept right so d is the y value of the y intercept so let's go to our graph and see what the y value of the y intercept is you can see here that c is the y intercept right and then the y value there is 4 so now we can conclude that uh, d is equal to 4 and now we can do 10.2 10.2 is saying let's show that b is equal to minus 3 and c is equal to 0 right uh, so the rule of thumb in math is that if you have two variables you're going to need two equations if you have three variables you're going to need three equations so since we have two here let's try and find uh two equations uh so what we can do we can substitute uh this point a on our graph f of x right so we can say uh sub a into f of x right so if we sub a into f of x in place of f of x or y uh, we're going to get uh, zero is equal to and then in place of x cube we're going to have uh, minus one cube plus uh, b multiplied by minus one squared plus c multiplied by minus one plus d but we know that d is equal to four right uh, so let's solve this zero will be equals to uh, minus one cube that will be minus one and then minus one squared that will be one so we have plus b and then minus c plus four right so we're gonna have zero is equals to three plus b minus c so let's make b the subject of the formula right so that we don't have to divide both sides by negative one if we make minus c the subject of the formula so we're gonna get uh, minus three plus c is equals to b right and then from here we cannot do anything else so we can name this equation one and now we can find another way to find another equation and then we'll solve simultaneously so we only have coordinates for point a and c right we have used point a now let's use point c but wait a minute in 10.1 we use point c right to find the coordinate of d so we can no longer use point c as it is we have to find another way of manipulating point c right uh, but then point c is the y-intercept and the turning point at the same time right and we know fully well that the gradient at the turning point is equal to zero so what we can say now is that f prime of x is equal to zero right so now we're just going to derivate x right uh, let's not forget x is x cubed plus bx squared uh, plus cx and so on right i just yeah circled it in red here so if we derivate that x cube uh, we're gonna get 3x squared we just apply in the power rule right and then plus 2bx uh plus cx if we derivate cx we're just going to get c right and then d we know that it's four it's a constant so if we derivate that we get zero and that will all be equals to zero the gradient at the turning point is zero right uh but we know the value of x at the turning point right uh it is zero because c is the y intercept right so we're gonna have three uh and then for the value of x we have zero squared plus two uh plus two b and then zero plus c is equal to zero so you can see, you'll see that uh, this here falls apart right and then this here falls apart so now we are only left with c is equal to zero right 
and then this can be our equation two now let's sub uh equation two into equation one right so we're gonna get minus three plus we know that c is zero is equals to b so minus three is equals to b and that's exactly what we are asked to prove right so yeah there we go we just solved the problem now let's do 10.3 10.3 is saying let's determine the equation of the tangent to f at x is equals to 5. so back to the basics what do we know about a tangent we know that the equation of a tangent is that of a straight line y is equals to mx plus c if you want to find the equation of a straight line you're going to need the two things you're going to need the gradient and the coordinates of one point so that you can determine c right so to find the gradient uh, we're gonna use f prime x right we're going to derivate f of x and substitute the x value to find the gradient but then now we have the gradient sorted how are we going to find uh, the value of c right we need a point to find the value of c we know that we are interested at the point uh, when x is equals to 5 right so if we substitute 5 into f of x then we're going to be able to find the y value of that point so let's you know go ahead and do what we're proposing so f prime x we have already derivated right uh, but then we can do it again uh, we know that um, now our equation uh, f of x will be equals to x cube right and then we know that b is minus 3 so we have minus 3 x squared and then c is 0 so uh, this part here falls apart and then plus d of which is uh, 4 right so if we derivate this we're going to get um, f prime of x is equals to 3x squared uh, minus 6x and then plus 4 falls apart with derivative right uh, so now we have the equation uh, for the gradient if we substitute uh, 5 we're gonna get the gradient itself right so f uh, prime of 5 is equals to 3 multiplied by 5 squared minus 6 multiplied by 5 uh, so 5 squared that's 25 multiplied by 3 that is 75 and then 6 by 5 uh, that is 30 and then this will give you 45 right uh, so the gradient is 45 this is the gradient m right so now we have the gradient let's find the y value of the point we know that uh, x is equal to 5 at that point right uh, so what we can do here we can say f of 5 is equal to now we substitute in into the equation itself right uh, 5 cube minus 3 uh, 5 squared plus 4 right and then if you put this in your calculator you should get uh, 54 right uh, so now we have the point and we have the gradient right uh, the gradient we see in that it is equals to uh, 45 and then now the point uh, when x is equals to 5 right uh, we have 5 and 54 as the corresponding y value so now we can go ahead and try uh, find the equation of our tangent right so we're gonna say y is equals to m x plus c m is 45 right x plus c so let's sub uh, this point 5 and 54 if we do that we're gonna get uh, 54 is equals to 45 multiplied by 5 plus c so 54 minus 45 multiply by 5 should be equal to c and then um if you put that in your calculator i kid you not you're gonna get uh, minus 171 it's equals to c so now we can see that y is equals to uh 45 x plus c c is minus 171 and the EP we have the equation of our tangent yeah such an exciting problem such an exciting problem uh let's do 10.4 let's do 10.4 10.4 is those kind of problems that you know people don't really want to do but yeah it's not that bad so the saying for which values of k will f of x equals to k have two unequal positive roots and one negative root uh, simultaneously <laughs> okay so let's look at our equation in this instance 
we have one negative root, right? And then one positive root. Basically, when we speaking about the root, we're just speaking about the x intercept, right? We have one negative root and one positive root, right? But then how can we shift our graph such that we can get two unequal positive and one negative root, right? So let me show you what you can do. So if you shift your graph slightly down, then let me just yeah finish doing that. If you shift your graph slightly down, then here we're going to have two positive roots and then here we are still going to have our negative root, right? So if we just shift our graph slightly down, right, then we are good to go. Uh, but then if you shift your graph too much, then problem arises. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If you shift your graph to such an extent that uh, it's at this level, then we're going to have one neutral root because that root will be at zero, right? And then we're also going to have one positive and that's not what we're looking for so we are shifting our graph down but then we should have a limit of how much we shift it down because if we shift it too low then issues are going to arise right so we have fx is equals to k right and then at the rows the equation should be equals to zero right so what we can do here we can say f of x uh, minus k is equals to zero. So minus k is what is shifting our graph. K is shifting our graph at certain units up or down, right? So let me show you something. Let's say for instance k is minus one, right? If k is minus one, then we're going to have f of x minus uh, minus one, right? Is equals to zero. So we're going to have f of x plus one is equal to zero and then you will realize that if we have f of x plus one then we are actually moving our graph up right and then we don't want that we want to move our graph down so that tells us that k has to be greater than zero in order for us to move our graph down right so now what we can say is that uh, let's make sure that k is greater than zero because if k is less than zero we are going to have a minus multiplied by a minus which is going to give us a positive and will actually be moving our graph up and that's not what we want so let's make sure that k is greater than zero right but then like i said we need a limit we cannot just move the graph infinity units down right this situation that we were talking about here uh when we have a neutral root right and one uh positive root this occurs when k is equals to four right when we move our graph four units down and then uh, another thing you should realize is that if we move our graph five units down then our graph just keeps on going down right and then we don't have what we're looking for so we need k to be between zero and four right if k is between zero and four then our graph will have two unequal positive roots and one negative root simultaneously and that's what we're looking for now we can do 10.5 uh if this is not so clear i've done a, a problem that had something like this so maybe you want to you know visit the channel and look for a cubic function playlist let's do 10.5 10.5 is saying determine the coordinates of the local minimum of g if g of x is equals to f of minus x plus 3. Uh, let me just yeah make our sketch uh, more appealing so the local minimum if g of x is equals to f of minus x plus 3 so you can see that g of x is the transformation of f of x right so let's find the local minimum of f of x and do the transformation and then we're gonna find the coordinates of the local minimum of g the local maximum of f of x is here at c and the local minimum is here at b right so if we find the coordinates of b then we can apply the transformation like i'm saying and then find the coordinates of the local minimum of g so let's go ahead and find the coordinates of b right how do we find the coordinates of b b is the turning point so the gradient there is zero right so we can see f prime x is equal to 3x squared uh, minus 6x is equal to 0, 
right that's what happens at the local maximum and minimum so now we can take x as a factor right so we're gonna have x and then 3x minus 6 is equals to 0 so x is equals to 0 or um, x is equals to 2 right uh, you can see here at C that that's where we have x is equals to 0 right so at B that's where we're going to have x is equals to 2 so the coordinates of B uh, will be 2 and 0 because it is the x intercept right so the corresponding y value is 0 so let's apply the transformation g of x is equals to f of minus x so instead of x for g of x we have minus x right so if we make the transformation to coordinate b we're gonna get minus 2 and 0 and then apart from that we have this plus 3 here and like we were saying on 10.4 uh, that 3 moves the graph up or down right so here the y value was 0 and then we move in three units up right so instead of uh, b being minus two and zero we're gonna get b uh, being minus two and three 